Anthropic, the company behind the Claude series of models, has just dropped in a new model, which is Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And they claim that Claude 3.5 Sonnet rises the industry bar for intelligence outperforming competitor models. By competitor models, I believe they mean GPT-40 because they compare their results with GPT-40 straight away. They also claim that it's far better in terms of intelligence and it beats the Claude 3 Opus, which is their previous model on wide variety of evaluations. And the good news is that Claude 3.5 Sonnet is now available for free on Claude.ai. So later on in the video, I'm going to be testing the user interface and I'm going to give an overview of the different features that they have come up with along with the release of Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So before we do that, let's have a look at what are the specialities of this Claude 3.5 model. The first one is the intelligence at 2x speed. Basically, the speed of Claude 3.5 Sonnet is two times the speed of its predecessor, which is Claude 3 Opus. And they say that this model sets new industry benchmarks for graduate level reasoning, undergraduate level knowledge and coding proficiency. By this, they mean that it literally beats the GPT-40 in all of these tasks. And as we can see from the results they have listed in the graduate level reasoning, it clearly dethrones GPT-40 beating it at 29.4 percent but gpt 40 is just at 53.6 percent the same goes for undergraduate level knowledge and coding task multilingual math and quite a few other tasks the only task that it's spared is the math problem solving in which the gpt 40 is still leading with 76.6 percent but claude 3.5 sonnet is only at 71.1 percent to get started we just have to visit the claude.ai website and we just have to log in with our user id if we have one i've already created a user id so i've just logged in and so it should log us in in a minute and there you go so this is the user interface that we come up with the moment we log in so we can see that there's a small experimental feature that's been enabled so that's the new feature they have launched along with cloud 3.5 sonnet and that is called artifacts in order to enable the artifacts, all we have to do is go to our bottom left and we go to our feature preview. And if you click on feature preview, we can see the artifacts here. So we have to manually enable and turn this on in order to use the artifacts. So later on in the video, I'll be showing you a demo of the artifacts and I'll walk you through how we can have a look at the different code and different user interfaces in the artifacts and how handy it is to play around with the artifact. One of the first claims they have made in the blog is that they say that this is now the state of the art vision model. So they say that Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the strongest vision model yet and surpasses Claude 3 Opus on standard vision tasks. And the model is able to accurately transcribe text from imperfect images, a core capability for retail, logistic and financial services where AI may glean more insights from an image graphic or illustrate that from text alone. So this is the chart that summarizes the claim. In four of the five tasks, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the winner compared to its previous model or GPT-40. Only in case of visual question answering on MMLU, that GPT-40 is still better than the Claude 3.5. Still the margin is quite less actually. So they're almost on par, I would say. Let's have a look at how well it does when it comes to uh, visual reasoning. For this, let's switch to the user interface. I'm going to add content to it, which is going to be a couple of images about deep learning. So what I've done is I've downloaded these two images from the internet. So one is about how the different models evolved from 2012 to 2028. It's all the deep learning models starting from AlexNet to the Deep Lab in 2018. And there's a different chart that I downloaded, which is to do with the increase in the number of model parameters. Obviously, with time, we have been increasing the size of these models and it goes up from 2012, 2014 to all the way till 2020. So let's find out what Claude 3.5 says about or these two images. I'm now gonna ask the Claude model what it can make out from this data. Let's find out what answer it has got. 
I feel that the response is bang on saying that this data illustrates the rapid progress in deep learning architectures and models showing both specialization in architectures for specific tasks and a general trend towards larger, more powerful models. That's just bang on. I quite like the response. It is also given quite a few bullet points, diversification of architecture, increasing model complexity and chronological progress. I mean, I have not even mentioned anywhere about deep learning and none of these images talk about deep learning as well they just are all about the model names and it was not just able to make out that these are deep learning models but it could make a strong analysis of the data that we've given in the visual format the next newest feature they have released along with it is the artifacts so it's nothing to do with the models but they have introduced a new user interface where we can sort of visualize what's going on behind the scenes. For example, when a user asks Claude to generate content like code snippet, text documents, or web designs, these artifacts appear in a dedicated window alongside their conversation. So let's have a look at how these artifacts come up whenever we ask Claude for any specific question that needs to generate code, for example. So I'm gonna ask it to write Python code to play Sudoku game. Let's find out how well it does it. So we can see that straight away, it's just popped up a UI where it's just literally churning out the code to generate the game. And on the left, we could see that code is explained in the different steps. So it says the Python script implements a playable Sudoku game. Here is a brief overview of its functionality and it gives the five functionalities. And to play the game, run the script and follow the prompt to choose the difficulty level and input your moves. That sounds fantastic. So all I'm going to do is copy this Python script and I'm just going to run it locally to find out how well it goes. So here we have it in VS Code. So the first good news is that it doesn't have any syntax errors. We can just run it straight away. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say Python sudoku.py and it says welcome and choose the difficulty. Let's say the difficulty we want is two. If I enter that, it gives me a bunch of numbers, which resembles a Sudoku game, which is fantastic. But if I just give some, say, if I just give the numbers for a row, let's see what happens. Seven, eight, nine. Uh-oh, that gives an error. So I found this error coming up whenever I give any input, be it divided by space or with comma separated, and it gives the error that it's invalid literal for int with base 10. The code is not quite complete, even though we have a very decent level of code that we can just straight away copy paste and run. So let's ask the same question to ChatGPT, write Python code to play Sudoku game, and let's find out how it does. We're gonna copy paste the response that we get, into VS Code and find out if the code runs perfectly. So here we go. So it started writing the code, but you can see that it's pretty slow and I'm not even sure what it's doing at this stage. Right, so it started continuing. It's creating a board now, but the speed at which the code is generated is clearly much, much slower than Cloud 3.5. So once it's churned out the code, then it's giving out the explanation similar to how Claude did. Now that it's done, I'm going to copy the code, run it in Python and see how it goes. So here we have it in VS Code. One of the things to note is that it's using NumPy, but Claude did not use NumPy. So I had to install NumPy and then allowed me to run the Sudoku code. So similar to Claude, it's also giving a grid of numbers, but it's not asking us to choose the level of difficulty before churning out the numbers. So I would prefer Claude in this case where we had the option to choose the level of difficulty. But anyway, if I give the numbers as my input, then I'm also getting the same error that we saw in Claude. So it says invalid literal for int with base 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9. I'm I'm suspecting that both the models have been pretty much trained with a similar kind of data leading to the similar kind of code being churned out but I'm surprised somehow OpenAI comes up with this NumPy code rather than coming up with the raw Python code. In any case I would prefer Claude in this case because one the code generation was quite fast, two it did not complicate things by including unnecessary packages for solving such a simple problem. Because it did not provide a user interface I'm going to ask it specifically to give a user interface so that I can play around with it rather than just go to the text editor and then end up play around with the code. So write code to play a Sudoku game. Let's find out if it gives a code with a user interface or like by default what it does. So it's asking me whether it wants me to 
explain parts of the existing code, whether I prefer a new implementation of the Sudoku game or if I like modifications or explanations of the existing code. I'm going to ask it to do a new implementation with user interface. So let's find out how it goes. So clearly the code has given TK Intel, which is for like interface. So let's find out what happens now. So I'm going to copy the content. I'm going to paste it in the uh, VS Code. I'm going to run it and see what happens now. So here is VS Code. I've pasted the code that I just copied. I'm going to run Python Sudoku again. So this time we get a nice user interface that has the option to start a new game, to solve it, and then to check uh, whether our entries are right. So I'm going to click on new game. So we got a bunch of numbers, which allows us to sort of enter the values we want to enter. So if I click on one, two, whatever, it's just uh, allowing me to enter numbers. But what happens if I say a or b or b if i click on check it says not correct keep trying it hasn't validated the wrong values that i give but if i click on solve it solved the entire puzzle and then gives me the answer and if i click on check now it's gonna give me the congratulations you solved the puzzle message now, similar to claude let's ask it to write code to play sudoku so it says it's going to display the sudoku board and then user input and then validation and then the game loop so the code generation is a little bit slow, but then uh, it is churning out the code. I'm not sure if it's going to use any other complicated packages for the user, in the user interface, but let's wait and have a look. So I've copied the code generated and then pasted it in VS Code in a file named Sudoku UI GPT. So I'm going to run it now. This time it doesn't actually have a proper UI, but it just comes up with a grid of numbers similar to how it did last time. But it's become more interactive asking it to uh, enter your move. So if I just enter my move saying one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then it's asking me to enter my numbers only, which I don't quite get. So I have entered numbers only and it kind of keeps going in this loop where I enter a sequence of numbers and then it's asking me to enter my move. So potentially there's a bug in the code that's been generated. I'm not very sure, but I would give it to Claude with this one because it generated a user interface with buttons on it and I was able to click those buttons and they worked fine. So let's ask it some challenging puzzle to wrap things up. So I'm gonna ask this question. Jane went to visit Jill. Jill is Jane's only husband's mother-in-law only husband's only daughter's only daughter what is the relation with Jane so the answer we are getting is kind of broken down into step by step to understand the relationship between Jill and Jane working backwards we can see that Jill is Jane's daughter therefore Jill is Jane's daughter so it's clearly broken down the steps of reasoning and then it's finally answered the question saying Jill is Jane's daughter but let's ask the same question to chat GPT which is the GPT 4.0 model obviously the answer that it comes up with again is a sequence of reasoning steps and let's find out how it says so therefore Jill is Jane's daughter so I think it got the answer and it gave a straightforward reasoning which is quite good so there's a tie here between Claude and GPT-40 in this case let's move on to a different puzzle so let's ask a different question which is also a puzzle which of the words below is least like the others the difference has nothing to do with vowels, consonants or syllables. And then we have given four words. So let's find out how it answers this question. So it says zipper is the only word in this list that can function as both a noun, a verb in its given form. So the others are either exclusively nouns or adjectives. Therefore, the word least like the other is zipper as it's the only one that can be used as both noun and a verb without any change in its form. So is that answer right? Though it came up with the right answer, the reason that it came up with is quite different from the reason that actually we think that puzzle is right. For example, more can be changed to Rome and pass can be changed into Paris. And this word can be changed into Chester, but zipper cannot be changed to any other city's name. So that's the reason we think zipper is the outlier. The reasoning that Claude 3.5 has come up with is quite different, but somehow it got the answer right. So I asked the same question to ChatGPT, and the answer that we got is that the word that is least like others is more, which in a way makes sense, like that is still logical because it feels that pass refers to a group of two items, etches refers to people who engrave or carve and zipper refers to fastening device but more refers to comparative quantity not a concrete object or a specific type of person 
So this is also one way of reasoning to arrive at why the reason is more. The difference in between the reasoning by ChatGPT and reasoning by Claude indicates that we actually have to provide much more details in the prompt in order for it to reason quite efficiently. But I accept the answer of both Claude and ChatGPT and I, I believe it's a tie between the two in this case. So to end things, let's give it a very challenging puzzle that's challenging even for humans. Let's take this puzzle where we have a circle and can have multiple blue dots on it and we can draw a line between two blue dots and the question is how many regions can the line divide the circle into? For example, if we have two blue dots and a line passing between the two dots, the circle is divided into two regions. When we have three blue dots, we have drawn three lines and it's divided into one, two, three, four, four regions. Similarly, we can have four blue dots and it's been connected with one, two, three, four, five, six lines and it's been divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight regions. So I'm going to ask Claude and ChatGPT, how many regions can we form? we have seven blue dots on the circumference of a circle. So I've literally explained what I explained to you. I've told everything here in the text and I've provided the diagram in the context. I'm quite keen how Claude figures this out. It's quite bang on. It comes up with a formula for solving this problem and it straight away throws the answer as 64. I'm really impressed with the logical reasoning steps that has come up with and eventually come up with the formula and finally given the answer as 64. Now let's switch to ChatGPT and find out how it does with this question. So here we are with the ChatGPT UI. I've uploaded the same image that we uploaded to Claude 3.5. I'm going to basically ask the same puzzle that we asked Claude and let's find out what response it comes up with. I'm going to use the copy paste the same wordings that we used. So I'm literally just throwing the same thing at chat GPT. Let's find out what the response it's got. Okay, so it's also figured out the formula that we need to use and it's formatted the formula nicely whereas in case of Claude we didn't have the formula quite nicely. This looks a little bit confusing for someone who's not having a good mathematical background. But when it comes to ChatGPT, you can see that it's all been formatted nicely and it, it's just given us the step by step calculation of how we can go about for the number of regions. The maximum number of regions into which the circle can be divided by connecting seven blue dots on its circumference is 57. So that answer is different from what Claude came up with which is 64. So it turns out the right answer is indeed 57 and not 64. So to conclude, we can say that even though, you know, Claude has come up with a very fast uh, model that is twice as fast as state of the art, which I quite agree with, particularly when it comes to coding tasks. We can see that definitely this number is true. With the, in terms of coding, I'm really impressed with what Claude has come up with both in terms of speed and the quality of the code. So definitely uh, we have a winner when it comes to uh, coding tasks. But when it comes to mathematical reasoning, I would still fall back on GPT-40. So GPT-40 still remains to be one of the tough models to be beaten. And, you know, it's going to take a while still for other models to push through and cross the boundary. But if you are really concerned about the cost, then you can always choose the model that gives you the best cost for the buck because the margin is very small between these models these days and it comes down to how much you're ready to spend for your production needs. So with that, I'm signing off and hope this video was useful in deciding between choosing the GPT-40 model and the Claude 3.5 model. I will see you in my next. Until then, take care.